The original Fractal Era was reviewed by Leo over four years ago now. He quite liked that case for its stylish good looks and excellent build quality. However, the thermal performance, especially with the solid top panel installed, wasn't ideal to say the least. So Fractal went back to the drawing board, completely redesigned the interior layout to improve cooling and hardware support. So now we have the Fractal Era 2. So this is the latest version of the Fractal Era, it's the Era 2 Mini ITX case. It's available to purchase now. It's got an MSRP price of $200 US, 220 euros, or in the UK you can pick this up at 195 pounds. It's compatible with three slot graphics cards up to 326 millimeters long and 63 millimeters thick. It's optimized for AIO CPU cooling with support for up to 280 millimeter radiator installation. Era 2 features tool-free chassis access with a single piece sliding exterior panel and a push to release top bracket for for quick and simple assembly. It's equipped with a sliding central wall offering 15 millimeters of movement for build flexibility. And it includes a PCI Gen 4 riser cable, dedicated mounts for up to four 2.5 inch storage drives, and a front IO panel with two USB 3.0 type A ports, a single USB 3.2 Gen 2 by two type C port, and a combined 3.5 millimeter audio jack, as well as a power button. So according to the specifications, it sounds like it has good hardware support especially for a small form factor case it's also got a really interesting or unique design to the panels it looks very similar on the exterior as the original era but you'll notice the vents on the side are much larger and the top panel that was completely solid in the era it's now a very highly ventilated top panel but it is still a solid wooden panel so this is a walnut top on the charcoal gray exterior there's a couple of other different versions or different color schemes in silver and in blue the uh, removal of side panels is really easy and it's quite unique so the top you just have to push that in at the back and it kind of flips up a little and then you can lift that out it's just held by a couple of magnets in position it's uh, a solid walnut top lots of ventilation here for airflow and then there's a uh, steel panel that's screwed to it and to remove the side panels so they all come off in one piece but you have to unlock them first by pulling out the dust filter. You can just pull it out slightly and that unlocks it, or you can completely remove it. That's actually the only dust filter in the system. It's a plastic frame and with a nylon woven mesh style, one of the better types of dust filters. Once you've got that out, you can just simply lift the side panels off all in one piece. And you can see really easy to take all the side panels off and get access straight into the case. All these side panels are made out of anodized aluminium, so they are quite lightweight. The whole case is very lightweight, so it'll be really easy if you're the type of person that moves the PC around a lot and wants to transport it to gaming events or LAN parties and such like. The uh, other removable panel is the top, which I think is a good idea because with it being small form factor, you're gonna be struggling for space inside to install radiators. So again, this is quite a unique design. There's two plastic clips, you just slide those and then the top panel easily pulls off like that. On this top panel, you can install up to two 120 or 240 millimeter fans or up to a 280 millimeter radiator. There is some restriction with the radiator size though. It does support up to 280 millimeter radiators, but it has to be a maximum of 140 millimeters wide and a maximum of 307 millimeters long. And for example, this is a Endorphi Navis 280mm AIO and this is just a bit too big. There's some uh, rivets that stick out there that hold this panel together. So if you are thinking of installing a 280mm radiator or AIO in here, you must check first that it does fit the dimensions of this top panel. So in terms of cooling support, as I say at the top, you can install up to a 280 millimeter radiator or AIO. That obviously means a 240, a 140 or 120 radiator will fit there. Or you can fit up to two 120 or 140 millimeter fans. Fractal pre-installs a couple of 120 millimeter fans in the floor. So they're working as intakes or pulling cold air in through the bottom of the floor 
and into the system. They are the Fractal Aspect 12 PWM fans and they have a PWM speed range of 500 to 2000 RPM. Another interesting feature is this central spine here. So it's kind of a dual chamber case in a way. At this side, you install the graphics card and then the other side here is the motherboard and power supply. As we've seen in some previous Fractal cases, this central spine can be adjusted either way for more clearance, either for a wider graphics card or for a taller CPU cooler. It's quite easy to do that. There's just a couple of screws on each side. So we just need to loosen these off. And you can see there's a little gauge here that's numbered one, two, three. In number three, it gives more space to graphics cards, so you can install up to a 63 millimeter thick graphics card in position number three. If you move it all the way to the other side to position number one, that reduces the size of the graphics card that can be installed to 48 millimeters wide, but it increases the height of the CPU cooler. So in the position number one, which is in the max CPU cooling configuration, you can install up to a 70 millimeter tall CPU cooler. Then sliding all the way back to position number three reduces the maximum CPU cooler height to 48 millimeters tall. It comes with a PCIe Gen 4 riser cable pre-installed. So in this side, you'll install your graphics card. The riser is pre-installed there, so you don't really have to do anything other than slot the card into position. I did realize when testing some graphics cards, you will be limited with that 326 millimeter length more than the width really because you can fit slightly wider graphics cards so this 7900 xtx from sapphire this nitro plus you can see that is more like a three and a half to four slot card that does actually fit in place you do need to remove the top panel and there's a bit of persuasion to get it in there but it will fit anything that's 326 millimeters or longer and that does rule out quite a few cards so a lot of the larger 4080 4090s 7900 xt and 7900 xtx cards will be struggling to fit in here. At this side, you can also see the two floor fans installed working as intakes. Hopefully that should give some cool air to the graphics card and improve the GPU thermals compared with the original Fractal era. And the uh, difference between the original and the era two is the uh, graphics card was horizontally mounted before. It was quite restrictive and it limited the uh, thickness and the height of the card that you can install a lot more than it does in the era 2 which is now vertically mounted so it gives more space for a larger graphics card and hopefully that should also improve cooling too with the two floor mounted fans and the vented side panel which is a lot larger vent compared to the original era. Also in this side of the case, there is a storage cage here. So this is just for 2.5 inch drives. You can actually fit two 2.5 inch drives in there. If you want to remove it, it's just held in place with a single screw. So just remove the screw. And then that just slides out and you can see inside there, you can install two 2.5 inch SSD drives. Potentially removing that opens up the bottom of the case a little more. That could slightly restrict airflow, but I don't expect it restricting it too much. At the back of the case, you can see there is only two removable PCIe slots, but it is a three slot wide PCIe bracket there. And then if we switch it all the way around to this side, this side is where you would install the motherboard at this side and the power supply. Obviously looking at the side, you can see it's only a mini ITX motherboard that can be installed in here. And it also only supports SFX and SFXL power supplies, unlike the original era that you could install an ATX power supply. The bracket for the power supply or mounting the power supply is also held in place in a similar way to the storage cage. So it's just a single screw that you remove and then slide it out. You just need to screw the power supply in position and then the whole bracket slides in place like that. It's uh, recommended to connect the power cable up to the power supply first and then slide it all in place and you can see there's just enough clearance there between the uh, extension cable from the power supply to the fan it's been calculated perfectly that the only thing that i can say about this initially looking at it is you've got an intake fan on the floor there drawing air up into the case and potentially up into the power supply 
but then you've got the power supply fan that's working in the opposite direction, pulling air in from the side and down. So whether that will have any impact on thermal performance of either the power supply or the case, I'm not sure. The floor of the case is uh, quite open. As you can see, there's a big vent on the bottom of the case there. So there should be plenty of ventilation there for those bottom mounted fans airflow into the case. And at the front and the back are two large feet and there's some anti-vibration rubber mounts on those. Quite a stable case as well with those long feet so it doesn't have much wobble when it's stood upright. The only accessories you get with the case come in this little cardboard box. Inside there is some assorted screws for installation and a few zip ties. So for the test system, I've used an AMD Ryzen 7 7800X 3D CPU. Motherboard is an MSI MPG B650i Edge Wi-Fi. Graphics card is the Sapphire 7900XTX Nitro Plus. For memory, it's 64 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB, it's DDR5 6400 mega transfers per second. Storage is a one terabyte Corsair MP700 PCIe Gen 5 NVMe M.2 SSD. For the CPU cooler, I was planning on using the 280 millimeter Endorphin Navis AIO cooler, but I found that to be a bit too long to fit into the top mount. So instead I've used a 240 millimeter, so two by 120 millimeter fans, and it's the Cooler Master 240 Atmos. Power supply is a Cooler Master V1100 SFX ATX3 PCIe 5. The only case fans are the stock Fractal Aspect 12 PWM fans installed in the bottom of the case as they would come from the factory and their intake. So they're pulling cool air in through the bottom and into the system. Obviously there's two fans on the Cooler Master AIO, their exhaust. System installation as a whole is pretty good. It's quite simple and straightforward, especially the main components. So it's all in the motherboard, the power supply, and the graphics card is quite easy and straightforward. It is advisable if you're using a slightly wider than a three slot card to remove the top panel. It just allows a bit of movement of the front and rear panels to fit a slightly wider card in there. Although officially it's only three slot cards that are supported and up to 326 millimeters long. But installing the main components is quite straightforward. There are a few things to mention about cable management, but I'll come back to that in a moment. But first let's look at the thermal performance. So I've run the usual thermal performance test, which is a combined Cinebench R23 and 3D Mark Speedway stress test ran simultaneously for 30 minutes. If you wanna check out the full case testing methodology, there will be a written page over at kitguru.net with all the testing methodology on there so head over there and check that out. Thermal performance with the case in its default configuration with all panels installed is good. The CPU temperature average of 68 degrees C over ambient means that it's just 9 or 10 degrees C hotter than the 7800X3D in our launch review and this is using a smaller radiator inside an enclosed case with GPU heat introduced. Removing the top panel and bottom dust filter had little effect on the temperature of both the CPU and GPU so they are not too restrictive and even removing all the side panels to make the case an open frame did little to the CPU or GPU temperature. So the case in its default configuration does a good job of keeping internal components cool and running at optimal speed. During the noise test, we noticed some unusual resonating or vibrational noise, which meant that the case showed some high readings under load. When the fan speeds increased due to component temperature rising, the noise output with this resonating noise hit 60 decibels, which became quite distressing. Distracting. At lower fan speed, when the system was idle, the noise dropped back to a normal reading of around 37 decibels. So as a whole, I quite like this case. The build quality of it is excellent. The way the side panels and the top panel can be removed is really quick and simple. You can almost do it one-handed. It's that easy. The thermal performance, as we've seen during our tests, is very good and it supports some really high-end hardware, big graphics cards, CPU coolers reasonably big at 280 millimeters. However, you do have to check on the length for that. There is a bit of a restriction with 280 millimeters, but a 240 fits in really nicely and you'd think a 240 millimeter radiator is big enough for the type of CPU and the power requirements. 
of a system like this. And also it's quite compact and it's got a reasonably small footprint, not quite as small as some of the vertical oriented cases, but for a horizontally mounted case, it has a reasonably small footprint and it's very compact, not imposing on the desk. So if you have a small area to house your PC, then it's gonna fit in nicely. And it's got a really high end premium look to it. However, there are some issues with the noise output, especially if you're running a AIO, with high fan speed. That can be counteracted by placing the system on top of another mat to kind of reduce the vibration through into your desk. Also, you can add some rubber mounts to the top of the screw points that also helps reduce the vibration and potentially running the fans on the top and the radiator underneath that might help too because you have the rubber anti-vibration mounts of the fan mounting points to help reduce the vibration but we found that the only way to eliminate the resonating noise completely was to decouple the top radiator bracket from the chassis frame. So I switched the fans to some of Fractal's own Aspect 12 PWM fans and the resonating noise is much better. It's almost completely eliminated. So the Cooler Master fans are not a good choice to use with this case. The only other minor negative I had during the build was with the cable management. Now it's obviously gonna be tight in here because it is a small mini ITX case, but some of the pre-routed cables, I had to move those to reach the connections on this MSI motherboard and the front panel power button connector, it seemed a bit short to reach where it needed to go on this MSI motherboard. I had to completely reroute that and kind of stretch it across the back of the motherboard tray so that it could get to the connection to be connected up. So that could have been a little longer, but other than that, it's a really really high quality case. It's got good thermal performance and it has a real premium look to it. The only thing that might put me off buying this case is the price. It's quite expensive at almost £200 or £195, but it does have a real high quality premium look and feel to it. So that's the Fractal Era 2 ITX case. If you've got any questions about the case or if you just want to let me know your thoughts on it, drop me a line in the comment section. If you enjoyed watching this review, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to Kit Guru on YouTube if you've not already done so. And if you enjoy what we do here at Kit Guru and you want to help support us, you could head over to our store, pick up some merch, or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to our website.